Welcome back everybody to another episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're going to kick off the new generation of console hardware by taking a look at the remaster of Spider-Man on the Sony PlayStation 5, and see how it compares visually to the original version of the game from 2018. For this comparison, the remastered version of the game will be played on the brand new PS5, and by default will be set to its fidelity mode, while the original version of the game will be played on the PlayStation 4 Pro. However, I also want to show you what the remaster looks like when playing in its 60fps performance mode, and I will be covering Miles Morales as well, but for the sake of keeping this video focused, we're going to talk about just the original Spider-Man game today. Alright, so let's kick this comparison off by first looking at some character models, starting with the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man himself. So right from the get-go, there's a number of pretty obvious changes that jump right out. First, there's the lighting. Now, I'll expand on the lighting in a bit, but it's worth mentioning here as the updates Insomniac made to the lighting engine have a direct impact on the look of many of these characters, despite capturing these images in identical locations at identical times. Spidey's classic suit, for example, reflects more white light now, removing its orange tint and giving it a more true red, while also allowing the incredibly fine texture of the suit's fabric to stand out more prominently. Then of course, there's the suit's damage, that has been completely reworked with larger circular tears and more visibly pasty white skin underneath. There's even visible loose fibers along the edges now, rather than the much more simplistic tears from before. You'll also find that a lot of the white dirt specks along Spider-Man's head have been removed, and in its place are more subtle black dirt splotches ingrained in the suit's fibers along the face and chest. Another big change that you've probably already noticed by now is the general resolution and texture quality. Spider-Man on the PS4 Pro uses a dynamic resolution that targets just under a 4K resolution, but can drop to somewhere closer to 1440p in more hectic sequences. But thanks to the power of the newly released PS5, the remaster could hit a native 4K resolution at a locked 30fps or a similar dynamic resolution in order to hit a target 60fps in its performance mode. For these images I captured, the game is set to its 4K fidelity mode, and because of this, Spidey looks sharper than ever, and it's simply incredible how great he looks, especially considering the sheer massive size of the gameplay experience. I mean, just look at the textured surface of this new suit. That stands out beautifully now, giving the character an unprecedented level of depth. Now, let's tackle the elephant in the room, the man behind the mask, Peter Parker. Now, if you haven't already heard, Insomniac has decided to completely overhaul Peter Parker's face, making him look a little bit more like his big screen counterpart. At first, I was a bit concerned about seeing this change, as it seemed like too far of a departure from the original art direction. But after taking a close look at several scenes between both versions of the game, I have to say that this new version has really grown on me. Not only does he look far more realistic, but there's an exceptional level of detail with this new design that was not at all there before. First, there's his hair. Peter's hair is much less dominant in this new design, with a shorter cut and much thinner eyebrows that aren't nearly as distracting as they were before. Upon closer inspection, it's now clear why Peter's eyebrows looked so off before. Instead of rendering each individual hair on his brow like in this new version, the old version of Peter uses a combination of a few rendered hairs with a darker, flat texture underneath. You can see a similar technique applied to the edge of his hairline on his head as well, which really doesn't look great when zoomed in like this. The new Peter holds up extremely well to these insanely zoomed in close-up shots, and I even found crazy small details like these few hairs breaking through the skin on his chin, a blood vessel right on the inside of his nostril, and this minor blemish on his nose. The original model has some great detail as well, but nothing even remotely close to this level of quality. There will no doubt be some division regarding the new design choice for Peter, especially in how he looks much younger with his new face. But there's no denying that from a technical perspective, this redesigned face is a huge step up from the rather fake looking face used before. Now, the rest of the characters in the game haven't seen changes to their design quite as drastic as Peter. Aunt May has more rendered hairs on her head, and her sweater sports a fancy new shader to create a tangible, fluffy look to it. But her face more or less remains practically identical, and only appears different in some scenes due to the redesign to the lighting. MJ is similar in this regard. Her general facial structure remains completely intact, though there's a few very subtle changes that have been applied. 
including more rendered hairs on her head, an improved specular lighting effect that helps enhance the look of her leather jacket, and some improvements to the way light reacts to her skin. In general, you'd be hard pressed to find character models in video games that look better than what Insomniac has managed to accomplish here. These are some fantastic looking character models that hold up to an insane level of scrutiny, and the fact that these improvements have been applied to the randomized NPCs as well is certainly commendable. But now, let's move on and talk about the enhancements that have been made to the game's environments. The changes here aren't going to be quite as obvious. The recreation of New York City was already incredible back in 2018 when the game first released, and it still holds up extremely well today. However, thanks to the more consistent resolution offered by the new hardware, Spider-Man's environments look more polished and impressive than ever. All the textures I could find have been improved upon, with much higher fidelity maps applied to things like sidewalks, roads, and brick walls. But what really blew my mind was the amount of care that went into this simple trash can. It sounds ridiculous, but just look at this. You can actually read the print on the side of this soda can now, and you can clearly make out the words cola, diet, and other on this lid. Something that just wasn't possible at all before. It's silly, I get that, but it gives you a good idea of just how much work went into updating the environment for this remaster. And of course, it doesn't stop there. Vehicles look sharper, signs have less aliasing, streets now feature new manhole covers and roadwork markers, and there's even a ton of new detail that's been added to many of the cutscenes, especially the opening scene in Peter's bedroom, where you can spot things like new surface textures, additional integrated circuits along this rigged toaster, and even this cool translucent shadow effect cast by the jars on his desk. It's also worth mentioning that Spider-Man Remastered also offers extended draw distances as well, which helps make the incredibly dense city streets feel more alive than ever. Then we have the lighting. This is probably the aspect of the remaster's visual design that you've probably already picked up on. There's several areas where the remastered either tweaks the lighting slightly with new effects, or changes it entirely, drastically changing the look and mood of the scene. The opening sequence, for example, where Spider-Man jumps out of his apartment window and races towards Times Square, previously took place at roughly midday. But now the sequence takes place in the early evening, with a slightly more pink hue to the environment. This changes both the coloration of the scene and the position of shadows, causing some objects that were illuminated before, like this weird looking mock-up of a PS4 Pro, to now be cast in more darkness, while other objects like his notebook or his magnifying glass glow in the light of the window. Even the bloom at this window has been toned down a bit, allowing his suit to stand out a bit more in the scene. You can find similar minor tweaks to the lighting all throughout the game, like this one scene with Dr. Octavius that takes on a very different tone that I feel hurts the original direction that the developers intended. But this isn't always the case. The lighting can look practically indistinguishable in some instances, with nearly identical coloration, global illumination, and bloom effects in play. But even during these identical lighting conditions, there is still one effect that greatly sets the remaster apart from the original game, the real-time ray trace reflections. Spider-Man Remastered, along with its companion game Miles Morales, offers quite possibly one of the best examples of how ray tracing can enhance the look and feel of a scene. When the fidelity setting is enabled, Spider-Man Remastered's ray tracing reflects a decently accurate projection of the world off of practically every glass surface in the game. And considering how much this game involves web swinging through mirrored skyscrapers, it's hard to even go back to the old cube maps used before. You can't even see Spider-Man properly reflected when clinging to the side of buildings in the old release. But thanks to the ray tracing techniques applied to the remaster, Spider-Man and the surrounding environment are much more accurately represented in reflective surfaces. And it's incredible how often this is put on display. From wet roads to small objects and cutscenes, Spider-Man Remastered is chock full of ray tracing. And I don't often say this, but it's absolutely worth taking the hit to performance this time just to see it all. Now, if 30 FPS seems blasphemous to you and you want the very best performance available, you can always flip a switch and set the game to its performance mode, which disables the ray tracing pretty much entirely. However, it's worth mentioning that even in this mode, Spider-Man Remastered still looks better than the original PS4 game, thanks to improved specular lighting effects and some higher resolution cube maps. Next up, let's talk about the shadows. As I mentioned before, there's a few new shadows and locations throughout the game that weren't there before. Though, this more often than not seems to be attributed more to the rework to the set time of day, and not necessarily any change to the amount being projected. 
However, I did find that shadows, including those cast by characters and objects in the game world, have a new soft edge to them that seems to blend into the shape of the character more believably, and the dithering from before isn't quite as noticeable now. Then we have our effects. Now, this is an area where it's a bit of a mixed bag. When patrolling the streets, I've found that identical street corners now offer new effects like steam rising up from manhole covers more often. This volumetric smoke effect can still be found in the original game, but just not as frequently. What's more, the effect looks pretty much exactly the same. Though, considering it already looked pretty solid to begin with, this is understandable. The same is true for other effects like fires and explosions, though there does seem to be more particles now, especially when smashing enemies with electric boxes. What's unusual though is that the water simulation doesn't appear quite as good as it did before. It could possibly just be personal preference, but I feel the water simulation looked fine the way it looked in the PS4 version, but now it appears a bit more flat. The way the water ripples also seems a bit off. Though considering how incredibly small a role water plays throughout the entirety of this game, this isn't too big of a deal. Now, at this point, I generally play a few clips so you can determine the difference in the sound quality, but considering both versions seem to be using identical audio files, I'm instead going to play some identical video clips from both versions to give you an extended look at how the two versions look and feel in action. Which version of the game do you prefer? Peter, are you in trouble? Do you need money? No, no I, mean, I mean, I'm a little behind on my rent, but no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Girl problems again, huh? What? No, that's crazy. I still wish you and MJ could work things out. She's a great girl. She is, but... The two of you would make some beautiful wow. baby. Uh... Peter. Um... Peter, are you in trouble? Do you need money? No, no I mean, I mean, I'm a little behind on my rent, but no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Girl problems again, huh? What? No, that's crazy. I still wish you and MJ could work things out. She's a great girl. She is, but... The two of you would make some beautiful wow. baby. Uh... Peter. And that wraps up this episode of Direct Comparison. Overall, Spider-Man Remastered is a surprisingly impressive update to an already remarkable looking game. I really wasn't expecting much getting into this. I knew there would be some ray tracing and a nice 60fps performance mode, but I was not anticipating anything more than that. This remaster offers some fantastic updates to some already great looking assets, including tweaks to practically every character model, improved textures in the environment, tweaked lighting for missions, and even some updates to the effects. 
and the ray tracing has completely exceeded my expectations. The implementation here provides the perfect argument for ray tracing in next-gen games, as it provides a remarkably realistic presentation while also delivering some incredibly stable performance. What's more, the remaster loads significantly faster than its PS4 predecessor. Scenes where you need to walk into a door and change clothes are now instantaneous, whereas the original version has you sitting in a loading screen for a good 30 seconds before you get control again. It's a little weird how much they've changed Peter's face, and I'm not sure why the water was changed the way it was. But this is definitely the definitive Spider-Man experience, and if you're a fresh owner of the PS5 and looking for something to test its strength, I'd highly recommend picking up Miles Morales and this remaster, especially if you haven't played either of them yet. And speaking of Miles Morales, I do plan on providing coverage for that title as well, including a look at how its gameplay differs from the base Spider-Man game, so be sure to stay tuned for that, along with lots more next-gen coverage including Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Call of Duty Cold War, and a breakdown of the consoles themselves. And if you want to catch all that, along with much more, make sure to like and subscribe for new content posted every week.